When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, it literally changed my life. And I want you to experience this so your life can be changed. I want you to receive the gift of the infilling with the Holy Spirit so you can experience all that God has for you. I'm Kathy Shropshire. Welcome to my podcast, and today we are going to talk about this very thing. This podcast is sponsored by Dean Shropshire Ministries. Let me explain to you a little bit about me receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. Now, you have to know that I came from a denominational background. I was raised in a Baptist church. I got saved when I was nine years old. Um, If you're not saved in the Baptist church, then something's wrong because everybody gets saved in Baptist church. So I grew up in church. I went to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I was in GAs. I went to Sunday school and training union. If you're a denominational person, then you understand this. Um, But when I got to be in about my 20s, you know, it no longer um, excited me to go to church. Um, It just didn't hold anything To me, it didn't attract me to anything um, that they had. Uh, However, um, I knew I was saved. I had my ticket to heaven. Um, And in the in the Baptist church where I went, um, hellfire and damnation services were preached a lot. So consequently, um, I would sin. And then I would rededicate, and then during the week I would sin, and then rededicate. Basically, I lived carnally, like hell, during the week. But I went to church on Sunday as I got older. Uh, That was something that was established and ingrained in me as a child. So you went to church on Sunday. Uh, whether you smelt like a brewery or not, you went to church on Sunday. And so sometimes I did do that. That is, smell like a brewery. But... Um, in my heart of hearts, I knew, even from a, a young age, that there had to be more. There had to be more than getting my ticket to heaven. Because we sang, um, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Maybe you sang that song also. And um, it was always looking forward to heaven. How wonderful it was going to be there. Uh, No darkness, no depression, no sadness, no sickness, no darkness uh, or or alcohol, drugs, none of that stuff. It was going to be wonderful when we all get to heaven. But I kept thinking, what about the nasty now? There has to be more than me going to church on Sunday, living like hell during the week, and, and that was it. There had to be more. You may be feeling that same way. There had to be more. Well, what happened was, as a child, I had memorized a lot of scriptures, and um, I, I remember thinking, this is like like Greek. Like, I don't even understand what I've memorized. I would get up and say before the review, review board in um, GAs, uh, I would say the scriptures and, and make up some sort of meaning that um, I thought in my own understanding that it meant, but I did not know what it meant. And it was frustrating to me to read the Bible, and I would say, it's just like reading Greek. (laughs) Well, come to find out (laughs) later on that the New Testament was written in Greek, (laughs) but I didn't understand it. And, And more importantly, I did not know how to apply the scriptures to my life. So consequently, I was a little frustrated. So I continued to go to church. I even tried the Methodist church, and I went there for quite a period of time. Well, uh, I got married, and we moved up to a different town, up to Hobbs, New Mexico, which is where we reside now, and we started hanging around different friends. Not so much partying friends, but friends that, hey, they were different, 
and it happened to be my husband's boss and his wife. And so we would hang around with them, and the best way I I can describe them is that um, they were full of joy. Uh, They were full of peace. They were happy all the time. Um, They were just different. There was something about them that made me attractive to them. And um, they would say say things like, well, the Lord told me this or the Lord told me that. And I was thinking, this is really interesting because I've been a Christian all my life. I mean, I was definitely sure that I had my ticket to heaven. If Jesus came back or if I went by way of the grave, I was going to heaven. But God had never talked to me at all. And so we started hanging around them and and I was asking questions like, why, why are you the way you are? And they 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 really talked about the word like they believed it. And I had never even, you know, experienced being around anybody like that. And so as I as I delved into that further and asked more questions, uh, I realized, based on what they said, that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. And they said that is what enabled them to to really apply the word to their life and to have the power to live the victorious overcoming life. I had never heard this kind of conversation. So we invited them over for dinner, and I told my husband, I'm really curious about this infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because growing up, I knew about God, I knew about Jesus, but this Holy Spirit, this infilling of the Holy Spirit, what was this all about? So we invited them over for dinner, and they were to come, uh, and I was preparing in the kitchen, and I remember I was standing there waiting for them to get here to our house, and um, I heard something on the inside, and it was the voice of the Lord. Well, like I said, I'd been in church all my life. I'd never heard the voice of the Lord. It was an inside voice, and it was, um, this is what he said. He said, do you want to be close to me? And of course, my answer is yes, because I wanted more. I wanted a, a deeper relationship with with the Father, but I didn't know how to get there. And so, of course, I said yes. Now, you have to understand that being raised in church, uh, especially as a child in sunbeams, is what we call the younger kids, I, I sang, my best friend is Jesus, my best friend is Jesus, love him, love him. And I thought, you know, I sang that song, but he wasn't my best friend, like you talk to your best friend. I had prayed um, all my life, incorrectly, I might add, because I just prayed like the the deacons did or the the pastor prayed and I always ended every prayer with if it be thy will but I had never heard a response I prayed I did all the talking thank you father in Jesus name amen that was the extent of my prayer and so this kind of opened up my mind to there is more, and I'm going to find out more tonight. So this couple came over. We had dinner, and after dinner, she said, I'm going to explain the infilling of the Holy Spirit uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues uh, to you from my Bible. It's in my Bible. Um, So we're going to go through scriptures. And I said, wait a minute. I'm going to go in my room and get my Bible. Because really, in my heart, I thought, I've never heard this stuff preached in my church, either in the Baptist or the Methodist church. And um, so I'm going to get my Baptist Bible. I'm going to see if she's using a different version or if she's doing it using a different Bible. So what happened was that she came in and she opened her Bible, I opened my Baptist Bible, and she explained every scripture in the book of Acts, Corinthians, other places in the Bible where it mentioned the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And 
I was amazed that that was even in there. And she said, do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to speak in other tongues? And of course I said yes. And my husband, he also said yes. So we were both filled with the Holy Spirit. And as I said before, this night changed my life. I wouldn't be here today. Our church wouldn't be here today if that had not happened. And I'm so grateful for this one who um, insisted, or rather didn't really insist, but lived it in front of me so that I wanted what she had. And that's why it's so important that that we, we tell people, because I don't want people stuck in a denominational church like I was, just knowing they had their ticket to heaven without knowing that there's more, without knowing the relationship that you can have with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because, listen, it changed my life. It made such a difference in my life. Because now I have a helper. I have the teacher of the church, which is the Holy Spirit. And the most significant or one of the most significant things that happened is that all those scriptures that I had memorized as a child, it was like they came alive. I I now had revelation of what the flip they meant now, how to apply it to my life. It was it was such a powerful revelation for me. Some of those scriptures I hadn't even thought about in years, in my years of sowing wild oats, so to speak. But those scriptures came alive to me. And I thank God for the the presence of the Holy Spirit to teach me and to show me what those scriptures mean. And I knew now that there was more. And the more was one scripture, John 10, 10, where Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and then you might have life more abundantly. Wow, that was powerful. I knew that there had to be more. I knew that there had to be more than just struggling through life with depression and and rejection and all kinds of things that that were weighing me down. But it was going to be wonderful when we get to heaven. I now knew that that wasn't God's plan. God wanted me to live victorious here in the nasty now. Glory to God. Change my life. It'll change your life too. I found out that I could be free because of what Jesus did. And I had always known that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. But then I began to realize that he didn't just die for my sin. He died for my sickness. He died so that I could have life and life more abundantly. That's not poverty. That's not sickness. And that's not lack. That's not depression. That's uh, oh, it just opened the whole whole Bible to me. And I was so thankful, so thankful that somebody told me, that somebody took the time to go through scripture by scripture by scripture and explain to me the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to do for you. I want to explain from the B-I-B-L-E, which is our manual for living, what it means to receive the gift of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. In future broadcast, I am going to explain that to you. But right now, I want to ask you a very important question. The most important decision that you will ever make in your life is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And that's your first step. You don't go to step two, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues without being a believer. So if you're watching this podcast and you have never said yes to Jesus, if you have never said, yes, Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord, I want to live the victorious overcoming life like Pastor Kathy is talking about then I want to invite you to say yes, because you have to want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And who wouldn't want to receive Jesus? It's the difference between going to heaven and going to hell. Well, hell is a horrible place. You don't want to go there. But you can know in your knower that should you pass from this life, 
either when Jesus comes to get us or by way of the grave, that you are going to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So would you pray with me? Would you say, yes, I want to be a child of God. I want God as my daddy. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. No, you don't know everything there is to know. I didn't either. When I got saved at nine years old, even even now, I don't know everything that's in the book. But I'm telling you, you will learn as you hunger and thirst after the word, as you come to a a go to a a Bible believing uh, faith filled church, as you hear what God has for you as his children, God is a good daddy and he wants the absolute best for his children. So would you pray with me? Would you say yes today? It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. So Pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. And right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, and I thank you for saving me. I'm now a child of God. I'm now born again, and I'm now on my way to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, welcome to the family. You are now a member of the family of God, and he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. We love you. I thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit more next time about how you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and how you can speak in tongues. I'll see you then. Love you. 